Hello and welcome to the Christadelphian Bible Readings for the 8th of August. Our first reading will be 1 Kings in chapter 2. 1 Kings in chapter 2. When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may establish his word that he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk before me in faithfulness, with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you also know what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me, how he dealt with the two commanders of the armies of Israel, Abner, the son of Ner, and Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he killed, avenging in time of peace for blood that had been shed in war, and putting the blood of war on the belt around his waist and on the sandals on his feet. Act, therefore, according to your wisdom, but do not let his grey head go down to Sheol in peace. But deal loyally with the sons of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For with such loyalty they met me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And there is also with you Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite from Bahurim, who cursed me with a grievous curse on the day when I went to Mahanaim. But when he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now, therefore, do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man. You will know what you ought to do with him, and you shall bring his grey head down with blood to Sheol. Then David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the time that David reigned over Israel was forty years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and thirty-three years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was firmly established. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and she said, Do you come peacefully? He said, Peacefully. Then he said, I have something to say to you. She said, Speak. He said, you know that the kingdom was mine and that all Israel fully expected me to reign. However, the kingdom has turned about and become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. And now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. She said to him, speak. And he said, please ask King Solomon. He will not refuse you to give me Abishag, the Shunammite, as my wife. Bathsheba said, very well, I will speak for you to the king. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him on behalf of Adonijah. And the king rose to meet her and bowed down to her. Then he sat on his throne and had a seat brought for the king's mother. And she sat on his right. Then she said, I have <clears throat> one small request to make of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, make your request, my mother, for I will not refuse you. She said, Let Abishag, the Shunammite, be given to Adonijah, your brother, as his wife. King Solomon answered his mother, And why do you ask Abishag, the Shunammite, for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my older brother, and on his side are Abiathar, the priest, and Joab, the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God, do so to me, and more also, if this word does not cost Adonijah his life. Now therefore, as the Lord lives, who has established me and placed me on the throne of David my father, and who has made me a house as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon sent Beniah, the son of Jehadiah, and he struck him down and he died. And to Abiathar the priest, the king said, Go to Anathoth to your estate, for you deserve death. But I will not at this time put you to death, because you carried the ark of the Lord God before David, my father, and because you shared in all my father's affliction. So Solomon expelled Abiathar from being priest to the Lord, thus fulfilling the word of the Lord that he had spoken concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. 
When the news came to Joab, for Joab had supported Adonijah, although he had not supported Absalom, Joab fled to the tent of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. And when it was told King Solomon, Joab has fled to the tent of the Lord, and behold, he is beside the altar. Solomon sent Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go, strike him down. So Benaiah came to the tent of the Lord and said to him, The king commands, Come out. But he said, No, I will die here. Then Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. The king replied to him, do as he has said, strike him down and bury him. And thus take away from me and from my father's house the guilt for the blood that Joab shed without cause. The Lord will bring back his bloody deeds on his own head. Because without the knowledge of my father David, he attacked and killed the sword two men, more righteous and better than himself. Abner, the son of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. So shall their blood come back on the head of Joab and on the head of his descendants forever. But for David and for his descendants and for his house and for his throne, there shall be peace from the Lord forevermore. Then Benaiah, the son of Jehadiah, went up and struck him down and put him to death. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness, the king put Benaiah, the son of Jehudiah, over the army in place of Joab, and the king put Zadok the priest in the place of Abiathar. Then the king sent and summoned Shimei, and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem, and dwell there, and do not go out from there to any place whatever. For on the day you go out and cross the brook Kedron, know for certain that you shall die. Your blood shall be on your own head. And Shimei said to the king, What you say is good. As my lord the king has said, so will your servant do. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem many days. But it happened at the end of three years that two of Shimei's servants ran away to Achish, son of Magak, king of Gath. And when it was told Shimei, Behold, your servants are in Gath. Shimei arose and saddled a donkey and went to Gath, to Achish, to seek his servants. Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. And when Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and returned, the king sent and summoned Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and solemnly warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you go out to any place, whatever, you shall die. And said to me, What you say is good, I will obey. Why then have you not kept your oath to the Lord and the commandment with which I commanded you? The king also said to Shimei, You know in your own heart all the harm that you did to David my father, so the Lord will bring back your harm on your own head. But King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. Then the king commanded Benaiah the son of Jehudiah, and he went down and struck him, and he died. So the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Jeremiah in chapter 29. These are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to the priests, the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah and the queen mother, the eunuchs, the officials of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the metal workers had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elash, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, Build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
Do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, When seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Because you have said, the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon. Thus says the Lord concerning the king who sits on the throne of David and concerning all the people who dwell in this city, your kinsmen who did not go out with you into exile. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am sending on them sword, famine and pestilence, and I will make them like vile figs that are so rotten they cannot be eaten. I will pursue them with sword, famine and pestilence and will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse a terror a hissing a reproach among all the nations where i have driven them because they did not pay attention to my word declares the lord that i persistently sent to you by my servants the prophets but you would not listen declares the lord hear the word of the lord all you exiles whom i sent away from jerusalem to babylon Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel concerning Ahab, the son of Koliah and Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who are prophesying a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall strike them down before your eyes. Because of them, this curse shall be used by all the exiles from Judah and Babylon the Lord make you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Because they have done an outrageous thing in Israel, they have committed adultery with their neighbours' wives, and they have spoken in my name lying words that I did not command them. I am the one who knows, and I am witness, declares the Lord. To Shemaiah of Nehalim, you shall say, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you have sent letters in your name to all the people who are in Jerusalem and to Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, the Lord has made you priest instead of Jehudiah, the priest, to have charge in the house of the Lord over every madman who prophesies to put him in the stocks and neck irons. Now, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who is prophesying to you. For he has sent us in Babylon, saying, Your exile will be long. Build houses and live in them, and plant gardens and eat their produce. Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, sent to all the exiles, saying, Thus says the Lord concerning Shemaiah of Nehalim. Because Shemaiah had prophesied to you when I did not send him and has made you trust in a lie, therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah, the son of Nehalim, and his descendants. He shall not have anyone living among this people, and he shall not see the good that I will do to my people, declares the Lord, for he has spoken rebellion against the Lord. The Gospel of Mark in chapter 3. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand, and they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. 
The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed, from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all he was doing, they came to him, and he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach and have the authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanjarnes, that is, the sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon, the zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is be possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he cast out the demons. And he called them to him, and he said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. <laughs>